All right, so Tyson Fury over the last day has been back at it on Instagram, mentioning people like John Jones, Francis Ngannou, who he also teased that a big announcement is coming. Now, Frank Warren has, he's basically talked about the fact that Fra that Tyson Fury, I should say, is more than likely going to make a defensive title this summer, which would probably, given the fact we're in the middle of June, you'd be looking at August, September kind of time, roughly round about then. And if you're talking about the August kind of September time, you would imagine it's not going to be anyone particularly amazing, given the fact that we're hoping that we're going to have this Usek fight in December. And, you know, given the fact that potentially we could have the four protagonists, Wilder, Fury, Usek and Joshua, all fighting within a couple of weeks on one another, that does actually kind of sound like a recipe for disaster because I've said this once and I'll say it again. When you plan ahead in the heavyweight division, normally something happens. And when you're having guys fight, I don't want to say back to back, but when you're having the protagonist fight back to back, normally one slips up. Prime example would be when Fury, Wilder and Joshua were all fighting. It wasn't every week. It was, I think, every second week one of them was fighting over the course of May to June 2019. And, of course, Joshua was the one who took the L. Now, Joshua, to be fair, had the hardest fight, I think, out of the three of them. And he was the one who took the L out of that. So you can never really plan ahead. But if you're talking about top 15 of WBC, they probably take someone who they feel as though stylistically he, he matches well with Tyson Fury. Someone like probably uh, Martin Bacoli or someone like that, you know, slow footage, you know, plenty of energy Bacoli has to be fair, but I think that his style would kind of be tailor-made for Fury in a way. But in the last day, Fury's been mentioning Francis Ngannou and John bon Bones Jones, fighting them in a boxing ring, actually fighting both on the same night, funny enough. And a lot of people are, you know, upset about the fact that, you know, he keeps mentioning the UFC MMA guys and he's not mentioning the Alexander Usyk of the world, you know. Apparently tried to make the Joshua fight, you know, did he, did he not? We don't know. Obviously he said he did and, you know, Eddie Hearn was kind of saying it was kind of all, you know, more so on their end. They were saying this as opposed to them. They were trying to go full steam ahead with what they were planning on doing. But Fury is mentioning these UFC guys and a lot of people aren't happy about that. And I can see why. And when you look at the comment section of, you know, his posts or people who are retweeting it, a lot of it is just, we don't care anymore. And... Tyson Fury, he's always come across to me as a very intelligent man. And he has. He comes across as quite a smart individual, you know. He, all this bravado, you know, this front that he puts on when he's on camera, you know, saying that they're all S-houses and they're all afraid of me. Tyson Fury is very, he's astute when it comes to selling himself, or at least he was, you know. He gets the PR point of view to some extent. He certainly did that a couple of years ago when he went through that UCAT situation. You look at how he handled that to how Conor Ben handled it. It was night and day. Fury barely spoke about it. Barely ever did. Conor Ben consistently knocking UCAT to the point where you just look and think like, if you do go down the UCAT road, they are going to make life so hard for you because you've done nothing but, you know, talk you know what about them. Fury never did that. I think John Fury mentioned it a few times. But other than that, Fury never did it. Fury understand, understood, I should say, the PR end of it back then. Now, I think that he's made a lot more money. He's had a lot more fans massage his ego. Because a lot of fans, like Fury, if you look back in the day, he was popular amongst a certain demographic, but he wasn't popular as a whole. Then he obviously had the Wilder fights and he elevated himself past the Anthony Joshua to the main guy in British boxing. And I think that maybe has knocked his feet off the ground a bit. Because now he's obviously making outraged accusations saying that Fury are saying that Usek doesn't want the fight, that everyone's running scared of him, which is completely not the case. And he's mentioning these UFC guys and thinking, you know, that he can get away with having those kind of fights for world titles, you know, putting Chisora a tree on pay per view for a world title, that that constitutes as, you know, a big thing and, you know, that constitutes him as being the greatest and stuff like that. And obviously, those are people are seeing through it now. But. For me, when I look at the way Fury is going, and you hear rumours, certainly from people like Alan Babich, who say that Fury has a lot of injuries now. There was rumours that he had an injury in the Wilder trilogy fight, which is one of the reasons why he wasn't as good. I think as well as the fact that Wilder was a bit better, and the fact that he probably wasn't as up for it as the second fight. All that plays into why his performance maybe on the night wasn't as good. As I said, you heard Babich mention that Fury... 
apparently, according to him, has lots of injuries. Now, Fury is someone who is six foot nine, apparently anyway, but he's around about the six foot eight, six foot nine mark. And he is someone who certainly videotapes himself running. Now, whether he does a lot of road work or not, I do not know. But for me, from the outside looking in, someone who is six foot nine, and if he's doing high impact training like that, you know, you're just asking for trouble. You really are. You're just asking for trouble. Klitschko was someone who, in his prime, was a swimmer because it's a lot less impact. You know, it's all good doing miles on the road if you're five foot ten, five foot eleven, six foot, and you weigh 180 pounds. Even then, there's still impact on the knees. But if you're six foot nine and you're 290 pounds, you, you know, you're just asking for trouble with that. So, if that is his form of training, injuries are bound to happen and you know that's just the kind of lower end i mean god knows what's happening you know up in his you know abdomen and arms and stuff like that so i well believe that fury does have a lot of injuries and i believe that fury is smart enough to know his limitations and to know okay my limitations are now that i'm feeling a bit more pain in my legs maybe i'm not as quick so maybe for him looking at the prospect of fighting and alexander rusek is like god i could beat this guy so easy five or six years ago but now i don't know and is it worth the risk whereas looking at the likes of john jones who as a crossover fight the same with francis and as a crossover fight would generate buckets of money maybe not quite as much money maybe as fighting an alexander rusek in saudi arabia with the offers that are apparently on the table but an awful lot of money nonetheless at a significantly less risk Again, I'm just thinking outside the box here with this video, but do you think that there's a possibility that Fury is trying to hope that he can dupe and gaslight the public into thinking? Well, that's what he's trying to do, into thinking that people like Alexander Rusek don't want this fight when they clearly do, despite the fact Fury just can't move in the goalposts. And mentioning the guys like John Jones and Francis Ngannou in the hope that they can get this crossover fight, that he can make a lot of money with low risk. So, you know, his body, even if it is battered a bit, you know he's still gonna have a massive edge over these guys do you think that that is maybe the road that fury's looking to go down because fighting guys like chisora and fighting guys like dylan white with the benefit of well obviously with chisora when he was finished but with white no punt resistance slow footed fury was always going to look good against someone like him it wasn't going to expose the holes that are there right now with tyson fury so do you think that's why he's looking to go down this road of fighting these ufc guys and at the end of the day if Fury was to go and turn around and do a Riddick bow, basically, and just say, here's the WBC title back, right? Doesn't hold the division up. Usek could maybe fight Wilder for the vacant title or whoever, and there you go. If he was to do that and then fight Francis Ngannou and John Jones non-title fights, I would have more truck with that because at the end of the day, you go and do that. Heavyweight division's not being held up. Make your money. Do what you want to do. At least, you know, you're not clinging on to that green title for all it's worth. We can get undisputed somewhere else. I'd have more truck with that than just holding on to that and saying, they're all ducking me and I'm going to call these UFC guys out. That for me is just like, why? Why would you Why would you claim to be the greatest of all time and look to fight guys who don't really have a background in boxing at all? You know, maybe a couple of amateur fights here and there. But John Jones has made his money in the UFC, as has Francis Ngannou. They've made their name in that brand. They've made their name in mixed martial arts, not boxing. You know, not under Queensby rules. So, again, bit of a bit of a weird video here. I say weird video, but a video where I'm just thinking out loud and thinking of some of the possibilities as to why Tyson Fury is maybe going down these roads of calling these guys out. At the end of the day, we'll wait and see if Frank Warren makes an announcement or if Fury makes an announcement or if George Warren makes an announcement on who he's going to fight next. At the end of the day, we've heard so many names change. We've heard Dempsey McKee and Jay Apataya, Martin Bacoli, Jarrell Miller, God forbid, just to name a few. We've heard those names, Zilly Zhang, you know, Andy Ruiz. We've heard so many different names of fighters. I mean, it is just kind of, who do you, which name do you want to pluck out of the hat now? Do you want to pluck Joshua out again? Do you want to pluck Wilder out again? You know, God only knows. But that's where we stand now. Let me know your thoughts. My way of looking at this, let me know your thoughts on it. Do you think that maybe Fury is more injury shop worn than we actually think? Again, at the end of the day, if the way he trains, which is putting all these miles in on the road, is true, that's just asking for trouble when you're six foot nine and tipping 300 pounds. The impact you are going to put on your legs, especially your knees, is massive. Absolutely massive. You know, the old saying the bigger they are, the harder they fall. 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Smash the like button if you could. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. For now, lads and lasses, I'll talk to you later. By the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, I'm actually meant to do this at the start of the video, but we're at the end of the video. So, many of you will know, a couple of years ago, I started a, a second channel talking a bit about crime. And time-wise was a big issue with that channel. So I couldn't really commit to it properly. But now I've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes with it, which is probably one of the re well, it is one of the reasons why I've not been as busy on here. Just basically trying to get a backlog so it gives me the time to be able to do my boxing channel whilst not having to be kind of scrambling between one and the other. So tomorrow, at some point tomorrow, I have my first little video on the new channel, Disturbingly Wicked. I'll link it in the comment section and the description. And give it a watch, give it a listen. You may enjoy it. It's not a long video, it's about 11 minutes. Obviously, we're going to be talking about anything crime related, whether it be celebrity crimes or whether it be crimes in the lower end. But that's what we're going to be talking about. And I'm really looking forward to it. I've gone with a different approach on this, so it's going to be off camera. It's just going to be audio with some editing, which I'm quite looking forward to showing you guys because I've seen the finished product of the next video I'm going to be doing and I'm very excited about it. So, yeah, link is in the description, disturbingly wicked. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe, of course, again, if you haven't already. And for now, I'll chat to you later for Midweek Report. Peace.